floating flowers can be great fun. So I thought today I'd create a floating arrangement for you. And I'm using moody blues and purples. So Allegra and I have had a wander around the garden and we've gathered some flowers to share with you all and to celebrate a floating bowl of beauty. So this is not for you to have a drink out of. She might be tempted to dive in here and think it's a water bowl in a moment. So what I've got in here is just water with some added flower food. And by adding flower food into there, it helps to stop the water from turning. If you haven't got any flower food, a little splash of bleach and a paracetamol will help do the same trick. I'm using a glass bowl, but it could be a pottery bowl, a copper bowl, whatever you've got. Any sort of vessel will work. So I'm going to start by just getting some flowers and placing them in here and just letting them do their thing and float about. So I'm using eryngiums to begin with there, a few scabious, and these are all things that I've grown here in my Derbyshire garden, so they're all homegrown cut flowers, which is uh, even more exciting, isn't it? Always brilliant if you can gather your own flowers, and the nice thing about a floating bowl is it doesn't have to have masses of flowers to, to make an attractive arrangement, it can just be a few blooms got some clematis here, this one which is called Swan River. Now traditionally we've floated things like hellebores or orchids into an arrangement but it's great to do a, a summer bowl of floating flowers and these are really so inexpensive to make, so instant with that attraction that they give and lovely for um, a dinner party if, if we're socially um, being responsible and having a dinner party with social distancing or if you just want to dress up your own dinner table just nice to lift it with a few flowers in there one of my favorite flowers is this scabious this is scabious clive greaves and uh, do you like that one yeah she's giving it a seal of approval there she does like that and scabious clive greaves is uh, an herbaceous perennial it's been grown and cultivated as a cut flower for many, many years. It's a, a very old cut flower in cultivation and it's a beautiful thing, really, really lovely. As are, of course, cornflowers. And I think you will agree, you know, what is better than the blue of a cornflower? And again, do you want to have a look at, oh, she's smelling the air. She's enjoying the fragrance. She's, in fact, admiring the petunias behind there. And quite interesting when I'm in the garden, just how often when, when I'm out there picking flowers and using flowers, how Allegra will wander around and sniff the flowers. It's almost like she, she appreciates the different smells that, that they have. Because fragrant flowers are a treat, aren't they? And something so wonderful about having that smell of beautiful flowers indoors, bringing them into your sitting rooms, into your dining rooms. Well, this little blue bloom that I'm using here, and I've just put some uh, creamy coloured ones into, it is a great cut flower to grow. A relatively new one on me. I've only grown this for the last couple of years. And this is the Catanache, which is, um, sounds very similar to a, a perfume, doesn't it, really? But it's a, a very wiry, sort of solid little stemmed, grassy-like perennial. And it has these very thick, sturdy wire stems on it, self-supporting, and this is Cat Catanache cerulea, and then we've got Alba, the white one. So the blue and the white ones, both beautiful to grow. It's got this papery texture to the flower, which reminds me of it being a, a helichrysum or a straw flower. So it's in that everlasting range of flowers, but a, a lovely thing to have. Well, I talked earlier about fragrance, didn't I? So I better practice what I preach and just add a few sweet peas into here. Now, sweet peas, not ideal for floating because the flowers do become damaged quite quickly by the permeation of the water, but nice for the moment. Nice to just enjoy that fragrance that they're going to give. So, a few of those in there. It's been a good year so far for the sweet peas. I've been quite happy with them. They've uh, produced quite a number of bunches, although they do get affected by the wet weather, which we had a a while ago so the rain does uh, diminish the flowers and damage the flowers quite seriously. A few of this little chap which looks very similar to a scabious but this is actually the the Nautia or Nautia K-N-A-U-T-I-A 
a, a handy little perennial to have in the garden because it's a hard worker. It flowers for many, many months, but I love it for its seed heads and it, it produces these pincushion pronounced shaped seed heads with this rotund centre indentated with all those little seed capsules. So very, very pretty to have. A few heads of nigella going into here. So when we're doing a floating arrangement, I almost want to sort of create the feel of a tapestry. It's almost like a tapestry of fabric and flowers combined together there. And different shapes, always important in an arrangement. The more different shapes you can introduce, the more interest you'll get from the design. And what will happen with this, it will last for, some of the flowers will last absolutely for, for uh, 10 days, two weeks, but some will go within two or three days. But the nice thing is, when the short ones have gone, the short lived ones have gone, I can easily pull a few of those out and replace them with a few other alternative blooms. So a few little florets of Brodia going into here. The Brodia is a South African bulb, a sun worshipper. It produces its foliage first. So some wispy sort of thin little insignificant grassy leaves appear first. The foliage all dies down and then the flower spikes develop on naked stems and it blooms without its foliage. So quite unusual for that reason. But if you want to grow Brodia, then it's absolutely essential that you give it a full sunny spot. And if it doesn't have the sunlight, it won't flower for you. So it's a real prerequisite to its success that you give it as much sun as you can. So just about there, I'm just going to put one central clematis just to adorn that centre there. So for this one, it's just about floating flowers together. Anybody could make this arrangement. It's so easy to do. Limit the colour scheme. I've got tints and tones of all the blues and the lilacs and the, the depth of the purple there. And it's a real joy to look down on. It makes me smile. It makes me feel happy. It's comforting, it's pleasing, and it's an enjoyable arrangement to make as a centerpiece. So come and take a closer look at my blue bowl of beauty.